Okay, um, now this is a Pojo 407, and uh, it's not just Pojo 407, it has the almighty ES9A engine, and that is V6 engine. So, um, I want to do a review of this car, of course, uh, 407 production ended in 2010, so I know there will be series or numerous review, both articles and videos already online. But what I'm doing uh, recently is more like after years of usage, you know, I'll just review it again and then do a test drive. So show people how the vehicle, these project vehicles have hold up after years of usage. So that people that who have doubt for, uh, you know, all this uh, unfounded claim that Pojo cars are problematic, if you have such doubt for my video, probably you could, <laughs> the doubt could increase or diminish completely. So that's what I intend to do with this Pojo vehicle as well. Um, this particular one is 2009 production. Uh, by production, I mean it was produced in 2009. Um, as you can see, uh, I know a lot of people will be like, okay, how can you differentiate 2009 from the rest of the productions? Uh, for the start, the 407 production or sale started in 2004. So, um, sometime in 2008, it was facelifted. You know, they restyled it and uh, not much difference when you are looking from, when you see, view it from the outside, but from the rear view, you can tell the difference between the phase one and the phase two. That phase one is the 2004 to 2000 and uh, to late 2007. Why phase two started in 2008 to, and ended in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. Now, like I said, from the rear, you can tell uh, phase one from phase two. For example, this tail light is the phase, one, the phase two model. This is meant for phase two. However, of course, people that use phase one have already upgraded theirs to this. So, uh, you could see most of the photos that you see on the road now will have this tail light. But it doesn't mean they actually face so it's just that it gives it um, a lot of people like this. Even me, I prefer this particular tail light design, which is the face two one. So um, the other way you can tell is the rear bumper, right? Um, now, of course, it has a chrome detail in here. However, on the face one 2004 to 2007 uh, this chrome here goes around it as it didn't stop but you can see this one it comes here and stop and then continue from here to the other side of the vehicle and uh, also the the first one uh, doesn't have this this uh, this is a little bit well. Like for example, the first production uh, 508, you see, it has this type of uh, light or light, yeah, sort of. Even though I don't know if it actually illuminates, but it has this type of design of lights at the on, at the tail. So, and then something like this. Of course, um, the 508 production started after 408, 547. Uh, production ended so I think it took a design of 508 from the rear so yeah you see this completely different from the face one so yeah the rear bump uh, the rear bumper is different from face one other than that uh, every other thing is the same as from the outside however I've seen a 2007 uh, 407 I think late 2007 407 with that rear bumper. Um, but of course, the other differences like the BSM and stuff like that. Um, so, okay, it's probably time to go into the vehicle. 
Um, okay, so as you can see, um, this particular design, um, I think basically all four, seven, or maybe not all, when you lock the vehicle, you can see the rear view mirror opens or closes, depending on when you lock it, it, clo it folds and close. When you unlock the vehicle, then it unfolds. Okay, so um, I think uh, this particular one, I will talk to the owner, maybe I'll do it for him. He needs a WD-40 here. You can see, um, didn't open. It's, it's not opening fully. So, um, I'll do it for him. I did a video on this recently about the uh, the benefit of spraying WD-40 on some of these things, especially during rainy season. Once you're in rainy season, um, you always have this issue. You know, once water goes in there, it kind of creates friction and they won't move freely. Um, okay, um, this is the interior. Um, let's check the red room. Okay, um, this particular one, yeah, it's very really okay, comfortable, and the 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 headroom is okay for me. I'm almost six foot, uh, no, yeah, six feet three point five inches, like six six feet four. So, and you can see I have a lot of legroom. Um, yeah, so let's check the rear. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say, ah, the, the, the 407 interior is not uh, that big. Uh, they are too, they are, their height is too long for the 407 to contain them. Let's find out. Um, okay. Uh, the leg room is quite okay for me. Well, of course, um, because I'm very tall, probably may need to shift it. Um, uh, move it a little bit up, up. Uh, other than that, any other person who is less than six feet tall or height, I think you don't have any issue. But like this, I can stay for like this, like 30 minutes without feeling anything, unless if I'm going for a long journey. Uh, the headroom is very okay. Very, very, very okay for me. Um, okay, so I've seen the interior. Um, I like the design, the rear headrest. I like the way they designed it. Uh, because it can come up depending on how you want it. Okay. So, alright. So. <sighs> now, the good thing about this particular one, I love the the audio system. I will get to the, the head unit first, but that I just want to explain something. Oh, the boots is precious. Of course, um, though sometimes I wonder if it's as big as 406 uh, boots, if the space size, but of course, you can always lower this place, but not as. Um, I think 406 probably has a bigger space in the boots. I think so. Um, what I was trying to mentioned before is the JBL system. I mean this is the only 407 I've ever driven or certain that the JBL system has produced more quality sound than that of JBL system in 406. This particular one is awesome of course you can see the subwoofer here. However other Pojo 407 um the first year the first phase one yeah 2004 to 2007 um the sound quality is, is quite good don't get me wrong jbl you know they produce very good but this particular one beats that phase one um it beats it very very well as um, this the subwoofer the entire if i it's just marvelous to listen to um, it's quite a very good design. 
Uh, of course, you can see the speaker. I don't know if you come up on the video. It has the JPN logo here on the speaker. All right, so um, let's check out the engine bay. Um, 407 uh, engine bay, the bonnet, it doesn't have the hydraulic support, you know, so you have to manually adjust and put it here. So as you can see, this is the VCC, VCC engine I mentioned earlier when I started this video. And this, um, the model number is, uh, yeah, model number, ES9A, Why the code, engine code is SFV. I'm going to put uh, all these things uh, in the description. SFV is the engine code, model is ES9A. It's 3.0 liter engine and produces 211 horsepower. Uh, it's attached to automatic gearbox, that is a six-speed automatic gearbox, uh, on, uh, commonly known as AM6. Um, I think the rest I'll have to mention it here. Um, this particular one, I think it comes with a uh, Xenon, yeah, Xenon headlight. <sighs> okay. But mm, one of the things I love about 407 is the the 407 VC specifically. I love the sound, the engine distance. Okay. I love how quiet the engine can be. You know, especially when it, once it warms up, it becomes very, very, very quiet. All right? So, all right. Okay, um, so, um, of course, now let's talk about the radio. This is a uh, RNEG sound system. They are more like uh, the head unit, the display, the navigation display. Um, it's completely different from the common head units or the telephone radio system in Pojo 407s. Uh, this particular one uh, is commonly found like in Pojo 508 and the rest. So if you want this type of head unit, it means you have to step up to like um, from 2009 or 2008 Pojo 407 for you to get this kind of setup. I uh, kind of prefer it to the other one. Very, very, very good. Very good looking. Um, Okay, of course, I've mentioned it's already a V6, and uh, um, what else? V6, uh, um, automatic transmission, C speed. I think I uh, need to take off now. Um, the AC works perfectly. This car is um, about the mileage, is about 69,000 kilometers. So it's, it hasn't actually been driven that much. Um, okay, so let's go for the drive. Um, now the LNG uh, radio system has a Bluetooth function. So, and it's very, very clear and powerful. Once you, 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 you sync it with your mobile phone, uh, as soon as it comes into the vehicle and switch on ignition, you just connect instantly and very, very uh, clear the voice, very, very clear the sound, all the thing comes out from. Of course, I think the, speak, the microphone is mounted somewhere here, so which makes it uh, near closer to the driver. So as you are driving and if you receive call, you can pick the call. You don't need to touch your phone. There's a button here, press it here. This particular button. Once you press it, it picks the call, and then very clear. You hear the person. Even if the music is playing, it will move 
the music or if it's CD or whatever, it will pause it, then continue with your remake, do your call. Once the call is ended, every other thing resumes. Uh, then he also has a, a micro uh, memory card slot here. I, I can't remember if it's micro, uh, but I know it's normal, the normal memory card you get in the market. So you want to slot it here, you can do it, you can save your navigation here, or probably your music. Um, that's about the radio system. Um, of course, the Pojo 4, this Pojo 407, in fact, it's like standard. It's standard as in for certain, not like I'm guessing. All Pojo 407 VCs has valuable steering. And uh, of course, if you've watched my Pojo 406 VCs uh, review, you probably understand what I mean by valuable steering. The lower the vehicle speed, the, the higher the, the vehicle, uh, height ground clearance. But the higher the vehicle speed, the lower it drops the vehicle. That it makes the suspension firm and hard to give you a, a, a very effective stability on very high speed. Likewise, it has um, variable steering as well, what we call variable steering. Same thing, the lower the vehicle speed, the softer the steering. Um, of course, you can see, very, very soft or uh, light to to do, to turn or stay. Why the higher the vehicle speed, the harder it becomes to stay. Um, it's standard in all Pojo 4 7 VCs, but for other, um, what's it called, Pojo 4 7 with uh, like four cylinder engines, those ones have the conventional power steering. Um, however, I will point out that uh, Pojo 4 7 variable steering is good however it's not as uh, soft or light as uh, that of Pojo 406 uh, VCs and Pojo 607 VCs um, for example the Pojo 406 VCs and Pojo 607 VCs you can easily st steer the steering with two fingers but this one I just can't it's, it's just not even the oil I've changed the power steer the, the steering fluid Put the recommended one, but uh, still not as soft as uh, 406 VCs and 607 VCs. Um, I've also driven other Pojo 407 VCs, they are all like that. So it, it means you have to use your full hand to do it. Um, so the reason why I'm saying this is um, so that if you buy it, don't be, feel get disappointed that because oh I said you can do it on um, any Pojo 46 any Pojo with V6 engine that will be as light as that in 407. It's also light, but like I said, but you can't do it with two fingers. Um, other than that, it's very very good. And like I mentioned in the 406 V6 review. It's a very reliable system. I'm talking about the variable steel, very reliable and durable. Right? Oh, it's a parking aid. This particular car comes with both uh, the rear and the front uh, parking sensors. So the front ones it helps, especially when you are in traffic. You don't get get to drive too close to the vehicle in front of you or an object in front of you, whether you're in traffic or not. Unlike most cars that comes with only the rear uh, parking aid sensors, so this one has both the front and the rear. So as you are moving, if you get too close, it will start warning you. Um, okay, um, right now uh, I'm on drive mode, right? Um, so on drive mode now, and let me see. Okay. I know a lot of people wonder, oh, why am I doing this? No, uh, this is a fun car, so I don't intend to show you guys what I'll be the speed I'll be doing. Now, um, it's on drive mode and it's AMCs. If you watch my 6.607 VCs uh, review, 
POV review, you, you understand what I mean by AMCs. Uh, this particular AMC is AMCSA. Um, it's a six-speed gearbox, and um, it has its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, I wanted to say weakness, but I could use the word weaknesses because, um, uh, you know, the strength is is, is meant for for the economy, and it can also make the car move very very fast. Fast, yes, but not. Uh, or the weakness is not as quick as. Not really. Okay, let me not use the word not as quick, but then as in not as predictable as you want it all the time. It doesn't mean it's not reliable or durable, but it's just one of the common things. If I have observed that mostly the common or uh, traditional automatic transmissions behave like that, including the ones that are not even in position, they are not always predictable. By that I mean when you press it, sometimes you want the kick down to come in and you press it down, it just stays dormant, you won't respond. Uh, so that's what I mean by not predictable. Other than that, it's just as good as every other transmission. So automatic transmission, I mean. So, but if you are the type who who is not really that into that performance, yeah, it will give you very good for your economy as long as you don't push it too hard. So right now it's um, a manual, normal drive mode. The V6 engine has a 211 horsepower, like I said. Um, it's very, very punchy. I mean, it's very, very punchy, and the torque is also very good. I've forgotten the figures. You actually understand the power of this engine when uh, you drive a Pojo car that, that has a manual gearbox attached to it. That's where you understand this engine. Or you could put it on, this one also has a drive uh, manual mode, so when you put it on manual mode, that's where you also get uh, the power of this engine full to the wheel. Only that, um, you know, it still doesn't feel that great like the manual. Or you could put it on sport mode and then boom, the sport mode is also very good, it allows the engine power to get to the full, to the wheels. Uh, the full engine power, I mean. However, it still has its own weakness when on sport mode. By that, I mean, most times when you put it on sport mode, you always get to the red zone before it shifts to a higher gear. Which, not everybody likes that. Me too, I don't like that. Uh, you know, I always prefer, even with my, like for example, my other Pojo cars with V6 engine and manual transmission, no matter how crazy I am on the road, all the crazy speed I've done, I've never ever pushed the RPM to the red zone. You know, but it's more like a common thing on the the AMCs. Once I put it on sport mode, I want to drive it, drive for fun. You always get to red zone, and messing up the for economy is supposed to give you. And also, to me, I don't like stressing my engine that much because it has so much power. So why do I have to stress it? It will do so many crazy things for you, even without getting to red line. So, so that's why I don't. Uh, I I try, I try to drive it. Though once I'm in a mood, sometimes I push it like that. You know, but just telling you, uh, the reason why that happens is because of the gearbox. Uh, however, it's a very punch, it's very quick engine. And uh, so I'll still get to the part where I will drive it for fun. But for now, I'm on the manual normal mode. No, I'm on the normal conventional drive mode. Um, okay, let's test uh, the the manual mode now. Okay, here it goes. Push it to this place. Okay. Now it's on manual mode. <sighs> See, it takes like two this time before I could, could enter. Um, 
Of course, the same thing I observed in the 607 V6 with the AMCs. Um, there's a, a slight delay on manual mode that when you shift it, it will enter the, the gear will not uh, it will change immediately. It will delay for like uh, maybe a second or two, probably a second before you shift to a higher gear. So it's not like the manual one. The only thing, okay, manual may give you a delay, but it depends on how fast you are. For example, the manual for manual gearbox, when you, you know, it depends on how you, your clutch engagement, how you apply it while you are shifting your your gear lever. So there's a way you could do it to take just very little delay. As in the delay is for you to, when you are pressing your clutch and you are shifting your lever, all those things depend. So if you are good enough with the manual, you may hardly get that delay. But for the gear to engage with the engine, no delay in that. You know, it's direct, it's very, very um, effective. So, but this one, I don't know, there's always a delay. So let's put it back on the normal drive mode. Other than that, this car is very, very good. Another thing is this, the 407 V6 uh, front brake calipers, they all have two, two pinions. That's two, uh, yeah, two pinions. They have two pinions and uh, which makes it uh, very, very effective. Uh, I love it about it. Very, very powerful brake. And that is the same brake in 607 V6 um, Z2. That is the phase two. So let's get to the sport mode as half fun. powerful a small touch man it brings the car almost close almost st to standstill and i see if you want a very a 407 with a very sharp and effective brake i would suggest you go for a v6 or ew12 so wow I'm not racing, guy. <laughs> As another 407 here, maybe he wants to. 
think I'm resting now. I'm just doing a review. So the brake is very good and uh, very powerful. I wonder what this guy is doing, guys. No, 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 don't do that, guy. Don't need to impress anybody. <laughs> anyway, it's having its own fun. Anyway, it's a V6 for some V6. I could tell already from the layer of the car that it's a V6. So I'm not here to race with anybody. So, because um, if, if I wanted to race, I wouldn't be on camera. <laughs> Uh, but of course, the car, both cars have the same power, so it's not like anybody is going to win the race. Worst case scenario, it will not be who has the um, who has the the cuts, <laughs> you know, to to push. But then, when I'm using driving other people's car, I don't because, for example, I I know the set of my own car. I know how good. Uh, the the timing, the auxiliary bells are. I know my brakes. I know my tires. So those are the things I consider. If I choose to push car, and or maybe I want to show somebody, lion kick is behind the way. So respect, <laughs> respect your elder. So if I want to do that, that's what I usually do. Other than that, if I'm driving another person's car, no, I don't do it. You know, I don't do it. Um, so guys, I think I'll be signing off here. At least now you can see how good uh, Pojo 407 is or how bad it is. I pointed out the strengths, the weaknesses and all that. Um, so if it makes sense to you, this particular one, I know some people will say, oh, they prefer a 407 2009 because of the gadgets that this one have. I mean, this particular one, um, the, the sound system is powerful. If you want this model in Nigeria, it costs about uh, four million. Four million naira. Costs about four to five, four to four point five million. So that's the average price. That's 2009, 2010 uh, model of Pojo 407. That's what you get it direct to Kumbu. I'm not talking about Nigeria use. That is in very clean condition. You know so. So guys, um, thank you for watching.